mes amis, hi guys. Two watches from Germany in front of us today. And uh, one retails for about 500 US, the other for close to 40,000 US. So about 80 times the price. So let's see what's the difference. Uh, this one is the latest one that I have purchased. And this one is the one that started my love for mechanical watches. It's an automatic piece while the, the one here is a manual wind. And uh, yeah, when I got interested into interested by watches about two and a half years ago, uh, up to then I had just been wearing uh, mainly um, quartz watches. Uh, I saw my, um, this in the collection of my sister's husband. Actually my sister bought it for him and I thought it was really cool, but she wouldn't sell it for, to me, uh, although her husband never wears it. And uh, well, I bought the same watch and, uh, and I've enjoyed it for a while and now I never wear it because uh, I moved on to other things. It still looks quite good. So it's a Zeppelin. I think the reference number is 7366. Uh, I know it's from a, a collection that they call the Flatline. And it's not totally stranger if you compare it to the Alonga Unzona. 1815 annual calendar that I have here. So let's see the, the differences. The, the case, you can see a somewhat a resemblance. Here the bezel is rounded, while here it's more uh, angular. Both have a, a bit more of a dome on the sapphire crystal of the Zeppelin. So what kind of brand is this? It's sort of a brand that Focuses on the on the style with uh, this line of watches has more of a Bauhaus simple lines, very very German uh, type of, of design, and um, the focus is on having a, a quality looking watch with a nice polish, clean dial, some interesting functions, and a very good quality actually uh, leather, not as soft and beautiful as the longer, but really. Not, not, not as bad at all. Uh, the, the clasp is a piece of garbage. Obviously, it's just like, it feels like very flimsy, uh, very light. I don't know if it's aluminium or, or whatever. It does the job. At least you get a double deploy and clasp uh, at this price range. It's not, it's not bad. And it has held up. Uh, I've worn the, wa the watch quite a bit. It has held up. Uh, but I think it, it's easier to just have a, a tank buckle uh, like you, you have here with a little retainer bar uh, that longer adds to make it more stable. It's just easier, cleaner, doesn't pinch your, your wrist. Uh, this is made for, for safety, but I'm not a big fan of those. They tend to, uh, one way or another, pinch my, uh, my wrist hair. <clears throat> but apart from that, it, it's, it's done the job. So the main difference, uh, one of the main differences is that the, uh, the Zeppelin is in steel while the, uh, the longer is made of white gold. So that's going to add 10 grand to the price, uh, something like that. Uh, much more noble. The brushing on the side, you know, it's one of the things that uh, brands at a cheaper level can sort of, uh, I wouldn't say fake, they, they, they can do quite good, you know, uh, even a Seiko, entry-level Seiko, it's not that different from uh, $4,000 uh, better better Seiko. Uh, I'm not too hung up about the, the polishing here. It does the job, maybe not as optic optically smooth as, uh, as the big brands. It's not one thing that really uh, makes a huge difference for me. Now, the big difference you see on the case here, that uh, the one here is an automatic, and so the, it needs room for the rotor. While here, it's a manual wind, so it can be very flat with, with, with a thinner movement. While we're talking about the movement, inside the Zeppelin, it's, it's a very generic Miyota movement, 45 hours of power reserve, uh, a bit of a code... I wouldn't. Nah. I don't really want to call it Côte de Genève, but you can see that, that there is some uh, some nice effect. I think as a first watch, it was a, a really cool watch because you have a a display case back, a bit of decoration, 
uh, interesting bit of kit on the rotor there and uh, you know you can enjoy the seeing the, the inner works the balance wheel here at uh, the wheel goes at uh, 4 hertz so 8 uh, beats per, per second well actually it's only 6 beats per second for the, the longer but it only has a small uh, it has a longer power reserve and of uh, 72 hours and uh, the small seconds uh, so you don't really see any uh, any jitter uh, that you would see on a, if it was uh, 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 it would have sent a second with a long especially long thin uh, hand like this so yeah this is a, a automatic but uh, one of the nice features of, of this uh, something you can play with is the uh, up down feature the uh, the actually longer does make a watch called the up down the 1815 up down which is beautiful very much like this and the movement will look very much the same uh, here you have the power reserve of 40 a bit, probably 48 hours and so when you wind the crown you can see here it goes up and uh, it's nicely done you know with a golden color to the to that hand very thin as well and there's a nice uh, nice balance to this dial nice integration the, the the logo I could do without it um, but the Zeppelin you know when you look at the watch it, it's a bit of a feel of a Zeppelin especially at the, the bottom where it's more rounded um, but I don't think there's a real affiliation to the Zeppelin family uh, but it was from Germany the, the, the Zeppelin family if I'm not mistaken um, so you have the the date here with an arrow, actually it's, it's right in front of the uh, the crown which is off-centered at 4 o'clock while well, here it is classic at 3 o'clock but you have a special pusher, we're going to talk about that and uh, a 24 hours di hour display so you know when you're at night or during the day right now it's uh, we're in late afternoon and so you know when, to, when not to change the date it's uh, when the date mechanism is uh, Engage is usually between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. Perhaps less, but it's to be safe. Don't manually change the date. Um, and while I have the, this watch in hand, you, you can the, um, the winding is quite coarse, and putting the crown to the first click, it's very soft. There's actually no click, so it's very hard to tell. Uh, I think here uh, I am there, so I can uh, change the date. But it, it's very, it's very unprecise. And then you can uh, hack. You see, there's no click. Uh, you can uh, ha hack the balance and uh, change the the time. Re-engage it. I mean, it does the job, but it, it's a horrible thing to wind. Uh, it kind of hurts your your finger here. It's really, you know, in comparison, it's a bit of a garbage type of movement and uh, and crown. But as an entry-level watch, it, it does the job and uh, it's very vi visually beautiful. Uh, that f that uh, sunburst effect on the dial is really well made. So it's quite a beautiful uh, shade of blue and it marries really well with the... They give you a blue strap as well. So... It, it's really about the visual about, uh, on this watch and the, the information and how well it is presented. So for $500, you can't really fault it. Now, uh, the, the longer, longer is the upper echelon of watchmaking. They make a lot less watches than, uh, than Patek. Everything is uh, hand finished uh, on, on the movement. The dial is made of silver, beautifully printed with a very glossy sheen. Uh, you can see my whole review of both watches on my on my channel. So what makes it so so expensive? The dial is actually made of a piece of of silver, and it really has a special shine. In person, it is very impressive. There's an AR coating on the sapphire crystal that doesn't cost much. Uh, now uh, let's go to the the heart of the the watch. Everything you you see here is a uh, hand finished. Uh, with, with precious, uh, so the, the dial is made of uh, German silver. The balance cock is uh, hand engraved. 
every watch is different. You can see uh, some circles here on the, the mainspring uh, barrel. This is a hand-wound watch. The feel of the crown is amazing, very soft, very pleasant. Uh, you can see the inner workings. Golden chatons and blue screws to hold them. You know, the balance is uh, adjusted in five positions. Uh, it, it is a, is a piece of art and people buy longer as much for the back side as it is for the front side. So it has nothing to do with, with, with this here. Uh, the, the movement is a, is a piece of, is a piece of art, uh, of functional art. So you see all the wheels hidden behind the three-quarter plate. It's because this is a annual calendar. Annual calendar means we just turned uh, into December, and I had to do nothing at all because it went from the 30th, 30th to the first uh, 30th of November to the first of December without any adjustment needed. The only adjustment I'll need to do is uh, at the end of uh, February, uh, on the 1st of March, because the, the watch is annual calendar instead of perpetual. Still, it's a very complicated complication. And you have the day, the date, the month, and uh, the dial is just uh, sumptuous, very balanced. Uh, you can balance and you can see the that it's an expensive watch in person, especially uh, it just, um, it's just amazing. You have the moon face, the hands are fashioned of uh, white gold. Uh, here the minutes and uh, hours are heat, heated blue steel and they really, really pop. And it's the first thing you see, the first information that you should see on a watch is, is the hour and the minutes. And, uh, and, and indeed, uh, you, in person, you, you do. So it's a lot of attention and uh, a lot of craftsmanship. Everything is uh, done to perfection. The button here uh, is there to readjust the, the whole calendar in case you let the watch power down. So there's three days of power reserve, fully wound. Then it, then it stops after three days. And if you leave it for a week, you just have to push, well, six or seven times uh, on that pusher and the day date and uh, the moon phase will, uh, will adjust. And uh, what I hope this little presentation has uh, given you an idea of why this watch costs 80 times that watch. Do I feel it is warranted? Yes, of course I do. Uh, but you can't really, unless you're very rich, get into this hobby and go straight to a watch like this. Uh, knowing what I know today, I know I should do it because this is the only watch I want to wear at work during the week. There's nothing better uh, in, in my view than, than this. It's, it is perfect to me. But when you just get in the, the hobby, $500, $500, even if you, own, if you have five or $50,000 to spend, um, I would have never put that into a watch. I would have bought a guitar before that or, or a car. Uh, this is the price of a car and uh, I would have never imagined I would buy something like this when I started my, in the hobby about two and a half years ago. And uh, this to me was a, a, an investment, a lot of money. Is it still worth as much as what I, what I paid, which, which was about $450, uh, uh, I think euros? Uh, no, uh, the residuals are, are quite low. But similarly, the, the, the longer I got it uh, on the used market for, for quite a nice discount from uh, the brand new, brand new price. So yeah, no regret. This is uh, how the hobby evolves. Uh, it's also a word of warning if uh, you're just starting and uh, you're looking at the, the Zeppelin and you're active uh, professional, you're working and uh, you're making money. Um, one, one day you might have saved up enough uh, and in your mind, you might be ready to purchase the uh, the big daddy the longer. So it's really the, the big daddy to the uh, to the Zeppelin. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation, and uh, do check out the full review of both watches on my channel. And I'll speak to you in the next one. Bye bye.